if you grab 10 people and you're like, show me your phones, it's like most people don't have a password on their phone. I'm curious how many of those people probably don't have a password on their computer. They're gonna get themselves in trouble. It's called the attack vector, super nerdy. How to excite and delight your customers in this video, I wanna talk you through a model. Because if you've ever felt frustrated, have you ever created something new and your customers were like, meh, they didn't even notice? You spent all this time building a new feature, launching a new service, creating a better experience, and nobody cared? Or you feel like you're not growing enough, probably because you have a low net promoter score. If you don't know what an NPS score is, you can go Google it. But you know, there's a world that you can create where customers come in and are excited, and if you understand their needs, everything changes. You know, recently I had a friend of mine, Merv Sims, uh, speak at one of my events, and the guy is literally an encyclopedia for process improvement. And throughout that talk, he was sharing all these models for kind of understanding the customer needs and how do you deliver value and how to kind of focus on the right projects at the right time. And people kept asking him, it's like, well, how do you know what to create for your customer? That's when he shared this really incredible framework called the Kano model. And I wanna share that with you guys today. The first part of it, if you think of it like kind of like a tree, you've got three uh, areas in the first kind of, well, maybe more like a funnel. You have three things you need to focus on. Number one is the needs of your customer. Okay, so the needs of your customer, and they come down to three different areas. First is the expected needs. If I'm gonna buy a, you know, a product or a service for somebody, what are the expected features? What are the expected characteristics of that service so that um, you're at least on par with what the customers expect? That's one. Number two is the expressed needs. So this is where maybe through your customer service, through your sales, through your agents on the floor, they're talking to a customer and they're asking them like, what are some of your challenges? How would you like those solved? And they're starting to express their needs. And maybe you look at your product or service and you're like, I don't even solve those problems yet. That's an opportunity for to start addressing the express needs. And then the last one, which is the area I like spending most of my time on is the excite. What are the things, maybe not even verbalize or express that can excite your customers to really uh, fall in love with your company. So once you have those three, then you have two choices. So this is the second step in the Kano model. You have two choices. One, you can either improve, which is really you know, taking what you have and enhancing it. I call that an enhancement. Typically, those suggestions come from your salespeople. So this is something I deal with with, with software companies all the time is, you know, they're getting all this feedback from their salespeople. Here's what I, I suggest is those things that they suggest makes for a faster horse. And those are important. And those are the expected needs and the expressed needs of your customer. So you need to incorporate that into your product roadmap. But the other option you have is to innovate. And this is where I think it comes from the internal team. So you have uh, improve or innovate. So once you've got those three needs, the express, the expect, and the excite, those move down into two options you have innovate or improve. I think the improve comes from your, t your, your salespeople. The innovate comes from the internal team, your idea on future of the market, where it's going. And if you improve and really deliver on the needs of your customer, then you have one primary outcome. That's the third phase, which is growth. I mean, think about it. The number one characteristics of a company's uh, predictable future growth is what's called the net promoter score, the NPS score, which really just asks after somebody transacts with your business or engages with your product, how likely are they to recommend your product to a friend or family or colleague? And their answer is 100% what's gonna drive people to share on social media, to grab their friends in headlocks. Do you remember Twitter? Like, nobody taught somebody how to use Twitter. Twitter didn't have a tutorial video on their site. The way they grew is people that got it, okay? I might have been those early adopters, 2008, I got it. I literally sat down with my family members, my friends that were more advanced, more early adopters, and said, here's how you use it, right? They not only did things that I expected, Maybe I expressed, but they also added features that excited me, that showed me the world was gonna be different in using this product. And they obviously improved the product. I mean, okay, today you could argue maybe they haven't kept up to that, but maybe they need to watch this video so that they can understand the three needs of the customer. 
and they innovated, and they added features. Most people forget in the early days of Twitter, it was SMS, and it was, it was updates on IM chat. There was no uh, web interface, mobile devices. They literally, it was a text message and or you updated your status on your, your, your chat software you use. But those are the three phases of the Kano model. Number one is understand their expectations around their needs, and those are expressed, excite, and um, express and expected. And then two is, what do you do with all this feedback? And you really, you've got two options, improve or innovate. And then finally, if you do those things, you grow through an incredible customer experience uh, where they start telling everybody about it. And you measure that through the net promoter score. And here's a tip. If you want to have some fun with this, is be sure to take some time to shock it off. See, the beauty of you know, thinking about how do I you know, do something unique for my customers, you don't have to do it for all of them. You can literally, and this is what I do, is you can take one hour a week and you could call your customer and say, hey, I'm the CEO and I just wanted to call and say thanks for your business. Or you could do a parcel drop. You can do something super unique and creative like a gift and drop it. You can do handwritten notes. I've been on the receiving end of many of those and I've done, I remember when we started Clarity, we did about 1,200 handwritten thank you notes for all of our first 1,200 customers who did paid calls. Shock and awe, just take the opportunity to be creative, have some fun with it, and really take your experience to the next level by understanding your customer needs. As per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel for other tips on how to start and grow your business. I'd also invite you to join my newsletter for free entrepreneurial training videos and other community contests. If you wanna get going, I got two more videos queued up for you. I'll see you next week.